Wednesday morning, higher ground, Tryon, North Carolina. We're going to get up to 78 before the day is over. Beautiful sunshiny day, very light breeze, and uh, we're just starting to see a little glimpse of color in the trees. Uh, the dogwoods have red berries on them and have a little red tint to the leaves, and some of the sourwood are starting to turn a little bit, but it's going to be a while. Our uh, front comes through on Friday, should bring cooler weather that will hasten the color changes of the leaves, and we're already starting to blow leaves off the driveway, so it's fall, and uh, we're looking forward to a great day today. It's uh, interesting because uh, if you do a study of the scriptures in its totality, you'll find that in just about every book, uh, you can find Jesus. Now, I don't mean the name Jesus, and I don't mean the personhood of Jesus, uh, but you can find the symbolic or the typology of Jesus. And perhaps no book greater shows that uh, than the book of Exodus. As we look at the book of Exodus, uh, we see no discernible amount of prophecy, but we see tremendous amount of typology and analogies. Uh, we see the lamb that is used as the sacrifice animal uh, for the Passover, and Jesus is the lamb of God. We see the manna in the book of Exodus, and we see Jesus as the bread of life. We see water provided for a thirsty people, and Jesus says, I am the living water. We see the deliverance of a people uh, out of bondage, that is the bondage of sin, and into a promised land, and Jesus offers us a release from the bondage of sin to heaven through him. We see the tabernacle of God, a place where the Ark of the Covenant represents the very presence of God. And in the New Testament, we find in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and we beheld his glory. And so we go on through the book of Exodus, and we see the risk of the baby dying with Moses and the little ark in the river. We see the risk of Jesus dying uh, being when Herod was ch killing all of the children uh, to and under to try to eliminate Jesus. We see Moses bringing a covenant from God, a law that we could never keep per perfectly. It would just point out our need for a savior. And Jesus brings the new perfect covenant, uh, dying once for all that we might have eternal life, a, a covenant in the New Testament through Jesus. In the book of Exodus, we see Moses saying, I am sent me, that's God sent me. In the New Testament, we find Jesus saying, the Father sent me. We see the opposition to Moses by his own people, by his own people. We see the opposition of Jesus by his own people. In Exodus, we see Moses as an intercessor for his people. Many times his people would go astray and Moses would have to beg God not to take action. Jesus made the same kind of a, an appeal for us in the book of John. And then we see Moses, whenever he had the presence of God, we would see the glow letting us know that uh, Moses had been in the presence of God. In the New Testament, we see Jesus as God in the flesh. We beheld his glory. Glory is the only begotten son. Yet yeah, it would be a fun exercise for you if you just want to take some time and take a look at each book of the Bible, Old Testament and New, and see how many places you can see Jesus. You can see him in analogies, you can see him in typology, you can see him in the shed blood, the sacrifice. Uh, take time, kind of scan through your Bible. Take a look at each book and see how many places you can see Jesus uh, in each book of the Bible. Inspired by God, written by man, but inspired by God, every word is God breathed. In the original context, with uh, the original text and the original languages without error. And so we come to a, a great place of studying God's word. I hope you'll take a little time to do that today. I hope that you won't just make it a five minute devotion today. God bless you and have a great day.